They've been, we're training this afternoon, and the reason we're training this afternoon is to wait till the three lads who were involved, I think it's three, isn't it, um, come. You know, so we've spoken to Big Malky even last night, Craig spoke to Malky, and guys are keen to come, you know. You know, Kenny Miller, at his age he is, still keen to get up here, still declaring the sale okay. Um, Don and, and Charlie, no doubt, will be in a, a major high has won the trophy. You know, so we look forward to seeing them at lunchtime, maybe just after lunchtime. So they might not be make the training session, but it'd be a recovery session they'll do with the physios anyway. What does he say about the I guess all three lads for different reasons that the fact that they were still wanting to come up after such a big game and different emotions but the different guys? Yeah, absolutely, you know, and the the happening thing was hearing from Malky saying that Kenny and Don were both desperately keen still to come, you know. Malky's obviously concerned at Kenny's age um, worrying if he's going to play another game in case of injuries, etc. You know, but Kenny Miller's saying I'm going, I'm fit, I'm okay. Didn't take any knocks, although a couple of times during the game yesterday, I don't know if it was a cramping up situation because they didn't work extremely hard. But it was a good match. Take so a Charlie, take a Charlie Adam won't be on penalty. <laughs> <laughs> Three Scottish boys in the first four penalties, I think, with were, were Scots lads there. But um, no, Charlie normally scores. You know that was a stat I got from the television yesterday. Was the fact that he normally scores. And no, Charlie went a high. And congratulations to him. You know because he's been down there and he's won his first honour. You know, so good play. You talked about Kenny. You've mentioned twice so far his age. Is this something that do you think Kenny's has got what it takes at his age to to be a force for Scotland when the next championships come around? Yeah, I do. You know the way I seen him running about yesterday. If you noticed him yesterday. He was doing all the running back to park as well. He was, he was letting the big boy Gustadi stay up front and he was dropping into midfield and, all that. and that tells you a lot about him. But you look at his, his, his fitness levels and the amount of, of running about he does during the course of a game. And he's played many times as a lone striker for Scotland and, and everybody's complimented him on his work rate. You know, so he's a genuinely fit guy and uh, he, he hasn't any excess baggage and, and weight or you know, he's, he looks after himself and he's a credit to himself for that. You know, so. I see Kenny Miller still being a, a massive part of this film. A lot thing. of his game is, is his pace and is his work rate, is his running. Are you surprised that he's, he's managed to keep that, that level of fitness up at this stage? I think he's got that, but I also think he's become a better player as he's got older as well, you know, because when he was younger, he was, he was all full of energy and full of pace. And, but I think he's learned the game a lot more and got wiser. And some of the runs he makes and, uh, are very intelligent, you know, off the ball runs, creating space. And you look at the chance he had, I know that he's missed it. But he's run across a, the, the 18 yard line to get away from people. His first touch at that stage in the game. Um, and the only thing that I think the big boy Carroll done magnificently well was put in a, a challenge which I think it caught his eye and he didn't quite hit the target. You know, if he hits the target, he's won the cup for Cardiff. You know, so great ability, getting off defenders, great first touch. And I, he struck it well enough, but he'll be, you know, no doubt, he'll be gutted the fact that he never scored. Yeah, just about Mark Phillips, and I think he's got no chance of. Just no, he's wanting to stay up, you know, he's, he's still here as you see, but the thing that you know, amazes me is the fact that Phil Barsley travelled up and he's got a wee bit, maybe have a calf tear, you know, still, Brownie had his dinner with us last night, you know, and he's got a, a, a groin strain, he missed the, the match for Celtic match, you know, so it says a lot for the guys to travel here and, you know, when we know that they're not telling lies that they are injured and they're struggling big time, the physios have spoke to our physios, that they want to come up and have a, their dinner with us and... Uh, Matty's desperately keen, Matty Phillips, you know, here's a boy who's, uh, you know, personally I haven't seen him playing but I've been speaking to Craig on a regular basis and Mike Oliver is how well the lad's doing and a player that Ian Holloway's discussed the fact that we've got him in, in, in North England, you know, so I'm, looking, I'm excited with the, the fact that some young players like him coming through and you see Barry Bannon back in the team, James McArthur starting to play regular football for, for Wigan as well. Um, you know, so the future's bright, you know, Doran's getting back to fitness and getting in the team. Morrison, I think, man of the match on Saturday, you know, so it all goes well, I think, for the future and when we start the championships in September, you, that, you know, this is a build-up, this game, the Wednesday's a build-up towards trying to um, get a squad and, uh, assembled for to take us forward. Do you have to keep an extra eye out for, for the Rangers boys this week, given everything that's happening? With, uh, well, there's only Alan, yeah. and Alan's... Uh, Great professional, you know, Alan's maturing brilliantly as well, you know, fantastic goalkeeper. I think he's been a top player for Scotland, certainly since I became involved here with Craig. Um, and, you know, he, 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 there is problems, but he'll put them to the back of his head and, and he'll train with us today. You know, and we've got Jim Stewart in the backroom staff here as well, you know, so 
these guys are um, only thinking of one thing this week, and, and that's the Scotland team. Welcome distraction, perhaps, for them? Possibly, yeah, possibly. You know, he wants to get as many caps as possible as well. You know, lovely to see Craig Gordon back here too. You know, top goalkeeper uh, who has been uh, dogged by injuries, but him and Alan McGregor is as good as anything, in my opinion. Two goalkeepers, when they're playing at their best, have to separate. Peter, I know, I'm not doubting what you're saying in terms of Alan being totally professional, but this is kind of unique circumstance in that either he or some of his colleagues may this week in the next couple of days find out they're redundant. Yeah, well, I, I, personally, I would rather not talk about that, Alan, because of the fact that we'll try to get away from that this week and certainly take Alan's mind off it by concentrating fully on the, the Scotland game. You know, Alan has not mentioned anything. He came in last night. He was upbeat simply because of the a f fantastic performance and a good result for Rangers yesterday. So he put that to back his mind. But it's, it's a horrible situation. We'll not get away from that. Um, who knows what will happen? But at this particular time, it's probably best that I don't comment on that. Simply being another club manager in the SPL. Sure, we're almost like second guessing to a degree as well. So we respect yeah. that. But if it came to a scenario where Alan says, actually, you know what, my my mind isn't right. I'd rather I wasn't selected. Hypothetical in many ways because it hasn't came to that sure. yet. You know, he's 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 here. He's looking forward to a training session this afternoon. Um, a light training session because he's had the game. Uh, he took a couple of knocks on on, on Sunday, um, but you know he's keen to, to put that. You know, and again, it's it's one of these things that it's, it's sometimes to get away from it and, and, and look forward to meeting up with the boys again. And, sure. and the players have got a good relationship with each other. That they're excited and. What they were talking about last night at the dinner table was Slovenia and what kind of team they are. You know, so we watched some DVDs last night. Of how they play? So what sort of team are they? They're, they're good. They're organised. They're you know, a small country like Scotland. They're, they're trying to go on the up as well. You know, they've qualified for championships before in the recent past. Um, solid enough. Play four four two most of the time. Uh, two sitting midfield players. But again. The backroom staff watched the DVDs last night and how that we think we could capitalise on it. And uh, you, you like to think you see some ways you can get in about them and, and uh, cause them problems. So that's what we're focusing on just now. So Slovenia will be a difficult game. But it's, again, it's a build-up. The American match after that. And then the big thing starts in September. How much do you use these then, the next two or three games to experiment to a degree in terms of shape formation or are you just going to stick with the tried and trusted? Well, you know, you, there's other boys, new clads in the squad, you know, like Matty Phillips. We'd love to have seen Matty for playing, but he's, he's obviously not fit enough to play. But there is places there to be had by other, other people. And you have to have a good squad of players in case of injuries. You know, Scotty Brown's had an excellent season. It's unfortunate Scotty can't play, you know, he's, he's got the groin strain. Um, Phil Bardsley has been playing regular for Sunderland as well. And all of a sudden finds himself where we half, maybe tear, we're not 100% sure yet, but and uh, there is places still to be, be had, and it's still a good thing, time for Craig to, to watch players like Matty Phillips and, 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 and see if there's anybody else out there who can enhance the squad. But if you, you, you tend to find over the last number of squads, it's been more or less the same players we one or two added, like James Forrest, who's a season James is having. What an exciting prospect, in my opinion, to see James Forrest on one side and Matty Phillips on the other side. And, the pace and energy, young Bannon, skills, the doggedness of Scotty Brown and and hopefully Dan Fletcher in the near future as well, you know, so look forward to it. You were talking about Ian Holloway saying, you know, England should have uh, tried to kind of cap him at least at under twenty one level. Do you guys therefore see this as quite a quite a coup? Yeah, absolutely. You know simply because you know, I'm talking from uh, speaking with Craig and, and, and Michael Oliver and the, and the staff who have watched them. They talk about his pace, his energy, um, pace to burn, and good skills. You know that that tells me that we've got Jamesy Forrest who can do that. We've seen that he's learned that, and he's becoming very, very quickly a guy who's going to be a big player. I think in the, the championships ahead for Scotland. He's doing well at Celtic as well. But Matty Phillips, if you've got another one like that, and you've got pace to burn in the wide, wide areas, we've already got James Mackey who can play there as well. Um, I always think at international level. You need a wee bit of pace in the right areas that can hurt teams. And I think uh, what Craig has done um, has built a squad that we've got dangerous players in dangerous areas with good pace that can, can score goals and, and cause teams problems. Peter, are you, obviously Mackie's not committed officially to Scotland until he plays a competitive game. Are, are you confident though with, with having him here and having him around the squad that 
that he has in effect committed yeah. himself to a Scottish future. Yeah, absolutely. You see him walking about the strip on there just uh, with a new away strip. Um, speaking to the lad last night at the dinner table and Craig obviously has had many chats with him. He's fully committed. Let me tell you that. He will be a, a Scotland player in the near future. It might not happen, obviously, this week. But um, certainly, I fully expect um, Mike Phillips to be on the plane for America. Hopefully, with no injuries and we can see him in this following jersey. David Ross McCormack spoke last week at his frustration at not having been selected in recent squad. I don't think there's too much malice in it, but can you understand Absolutely. why he's frustrated? Absolutely. Him? Spoke to Craig, you know, and Craig feels a bit sorry for him in regards to that, you know. Um, he, he's scoring goals, he's, he's, he's a good player, Ross has been in before. But he also feels that like Craig Mikhail Swift or, you know, has uh, done him a turn in the past. He played an excellent game in Spain uh, up front in the type of role that on his own that he, he was he mirrored Kenny Miller's type of performance there. Uh, we've got James Mackey who can play that role as well, you know. So so Ross is a bit unfortunate if I'm if uh, if I'm being honest and, and Craig recognises that. So the, the, the door isn't closing Ross McCormack because he's not in this squad. Ross McCormack could have a big future ahead in more important games um, if he keeps up his form because um, I know that Craig still um, rates him as a player but he just feels that the players that he's picked are just slightly ahead of him just now. I think Ross has kind of suggested that maybe he hadn't been communicating why he hadn't been included. Do you think there's an argument to say you know, that, that could have been done a little bit better, maybe a work could be said yeah. to the guys I, who were... I don't know the situation if I'm being honest Mark, I'm not a, a privy to what did or didn't go on with regards to communication um, but I'm sure that one thing um, that Craig normally does, and I speak for him from a hold, and I, I know him very, very well, as you know, is the fact that he likes to communicate and won't shy away from chatting to people um, with, with respect that. Whether they phones people and tells them they're not in the squad, I don't know. Uh, I'm not even sure if he does that to tell them they're in the squad. He might talk to the manager. Uh, in terms of the other players, I'm about it. Well, I think we've got to look forward. You know, we spoke about it a million times, and I think we've got to make sure that um, we focus not on one individual. It's a, it's a, it's a. We always like to see the Scotland team as a, as a group now who are wanting to take us forward, and I think the only way forward is by um, getting good results. And if we get good results, it will take us forward. And as I say, we've, we've spoke at length many times. You know. And it certainly um, keeps getting brought up, but we, I think we have to put it away and look forward. Well, what I was going to say is, can you understand why supporters keep talking about it and why it is kind of an issue because he's playing well and what he's doing? Well, all the players are playing well as well, I think. You know, I think Kenny Miller's playing well. You know, but no, I don't think it's a time and a place today to speak about Stephen Fletcher. You know, I think we've, it's been well documented and spoken about in the past by the manager. Can we then take from that then, Peter, that that's a line drawn under it? I think it has to be a line drawn under it. As, you know, as, as far as we're concerned, um, we have to move forward. And the way we move forward is not to think about one individual. We've got to work as a team, as a group, to try and win matches for Scotland. We've got massive World Cup qualifiers coming up in September. This game against Slovenia and the game against USA is all about for us building towards getting the best team in the park who are focused on doing their best for Scotland and trying to get a result and to make the fans happy.